I love that reading from Isaiah 55. It's a favorite book of the Old Testament, as those of us who are doing our long ramble through the book of Isaiah on Wednesday mornings know all too well. And I should have said earlier, if you're around on Wednesday morning, we'll meet again this week. Um, I'm back with you. But Isaiah 55 is a passage set at that point where the exiles have had this opportunity to return. And how will it be for them? Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Well, this passage could well have been designed for a man just home from a cruise. Absolutely no need to go thirsty on a cruise ship. At any point, you're not that far away from a very well-dressed person who might come by with a little silver platter and say comforting words like, cocktail of the day, sir? No need to thirst. And as for eating what is good and delighting in rich food, <laughs> Don't get me started. But, but surely Isaiah has a little more than his stomach in mind when he writes these words. Isaiah writes for a people who are restored to their land. They're replanting their crops. They're rebuilding their homes. But whose real need is the God who is restoring them replanting them, rebuilding them. Isaiah writes for a people who are restored to their land, replanting their crops, rebuilding their homes, but whose real need is for God. The God who restores, the God who replants, the God who rebuilds. And God has wonderful things in store for God's people. And those who hunger and thirst will be satisfied with good food, rich food, delightful food. But the food is not the point. It's not about the provisions. It's all about the provider. We thirst, we hunger but it is God that will provide only God that will satisfy and so God says through Isaiah to God's people incline your ear and come to me listen so that you may live God will make an everlasting covenant with God's people. Sure, steadfast love. As God loved David, so God loves the people of David, the Jewish people, and by glorious extension, thanks be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to us too. The invitation is free and gracious, universal and eternal. Come to the waters. Find sustenance. Find refreshment. Come, drink, come and eat. I guess it's possible to hear an invitation like this and to respond that actually you're quite happy being thirsty and that a spot of hunger never did anybody any harm. The food and the water will not be forced upon anybody. But you do need to know 
what you are rejecting. You do need to understand that God hasn't promised us half a cup of water and a slice of stale bread. God has promised to satisfy us, to delight us. So come, find sustenance, find refreshment, come, listen and come. But also heed the warning of verse 2 in our passage. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? The exiles on their return are being challenged to choose wisely, to labor fruitfully, to get their priorities right. And surely that challenge echoes through the centuries to us as well. Choose wisely, labor fruitfully, get your priorities right. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? Your labor for that which does not satisfy. I wanted to remind myself of something that one of the Desert Fathers had said, and I could only just about remember his name. I knew it was a bit like Pokemon, but very different to Pokemon. His name is Poemen, and Abba Poemen, this great father of the desert, was reported to have said, do not give your heart to that which does not satisfy your heart. I'm going to say that again. Do not give your heart to that which does not satisfy your heart. In a world of choices and challenges, what will we spend our time and our money on? Well, Isaiah says, why spend it on the things that do not satisfy? Heed God, listen to God, come to the waters of God. Come and find what it is that God has for you. God has promised us so much. Will we give ourselves to God? And enjoy the goodness that God gives. Maybe we are not. Maybe we are called not to spend our lives defending God. And pleading God's cause. But rather sitting down with God. And enjoying God's banquet. We know we are servants of the heavenly God. But do we recognize also that God wants us as dining companions? Remember the wonders of Psalm 23. As God prepares a banquet for us, even in the presence of our enemies. Remember the example of Jesus who chose time and again to teach his most significant lessons whilst food was being shared. And remember how Jesus chose to be remembered in this foretaste of the heavenly banquet with bread and wine. Maybe we should spend less time arguing about theology and more time enjoying what God has for us. Maybe we should invite friends less to debates and more to banquets. Maybe we should recognize that our challenge when the table is full is to build a bigger table, not to keep people out. I am thirsty. I am hungry. And God's resources 
will not run dry. Do you thirst? Do you hunger? You know where satisfaction is to be found. God will provide goodness, love, mercy, forgiveness, all that we thirst for, all that we hunger after, God will provide. So come, everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters. And you that have no money, no resources of your own, that's all right. Come, buy and eat. Amen. Let us pray.